Hey, uh, so like, Boyx, what are you doing this weekend? Do you want to hang out? Oh, yeah, how's it going, man? Um, yeah, I guess we could. I don't know, I haven't seen uh, you in like a long yeah. time, but, uh, you know, you, you, so you got some free time this weekend? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I got a little time. What were you thinking? What, what? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm i like looking after this really nice, like, fancy house, and I could just uh, really use a, a hand uh, chopping some of the tasks down to size, but I mean, there's some like, free beer and... Uh, Oh, you need help moving. Yeah, moving a uh, a thing. That's an oddly specific thing to say. Weird. Hey, you uh, got beer. Yeah. Beer yeah. and pizza. Come on for beer and pizza. I do I do like beer and pizza. Okay, yeah, you got me. I'll be there. Dogs. They're coming. They're coming your way. They'll be here soon. Baldwin, I, I think there's someone in there. There's no way that's a dead chick. Nope. It's a dead chick. Yep. If I call the police, then Lance will get arrested. Screw this up, there's no way I'm going aboard Team Lance. Uh, that's consensual. Oh. We follow Lance Bryant's book and we'll be fine. There are three basic principles to success. Number one, reason. Nothing adds up. These random people stopping by. I'm here to see Lance Bryant. Lance Bryant? Lance Bryant? I'm not Lance Bryant. How many times do I have to tell you people? How many of us people have been by here? Okay, number two, focus. I'm the neighbor and I want to know who she was and how she ended up on your doorstep. There we are. are. You're fine. I gotta puke. Ay, <laughs> Dios mío. Number three, effort. No one gets nowhere without 120% effort. Well, let's do it. Guess it could be worse. Those troops had a mixed martial artist as a leader. <laughs> Mr. Baldwin won't eat. Eat my soul. Good friend, help you move. Great friend, help you move a body. What are we moving again? You'll see her. I it. Um, it. Anyway, okay. Welcome to the podcast. Sure, something like that. That works. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't have to edit. <laughs> This is Rough Cuts. I'm Boyx. That's Ileon. We're a podcast where we watch movies supposedly about dogs and then rate the dogs at the end. They're definitely about dogs. It's lot. There's dogs on the cover. They talk about a dog. The dog's in the title. The title. The dog is yeah. in the title of the movie. How could it not feature? It doesn't feature a fucking dog. I'm, there's there's a dog in the movie. There is a dog. Okay, there is a dog. Yeah. So this movie's called Feeding Mr. Baldwin. It's an indie black comedy film mm -hmm. uh, by director Will Prescott. Big yes. Kojima fan. Will Prescott. You said that off of uh, his Twitter. Sorry, his x.com. His x.com. They they killed the Twitter uh, domain. It's gone. Now it's just x, formerly Twitter. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> so, yes. Will Prescott. Uh, apparently a commercial... Uh, director makes a bunch of shorts, okay. and this is his only feature film, which is yes. released exclusively on Amazon in the U.S. and U.K., not in Canada. So you also, this is an illegal film for Canadian yeah. audiences. I was not allowed to watch this. Uh, please do not report yeah, me to we, Justin Trudeau. We had to make you watch the Don't You Put It In Your Mouth for an hour and a half instead. Real, real friends... Help you bury a body and don't tell Justin Trudeau about watching illegal movies. It's true. It's true. I speaking of Yeah. This movie. Uh the premise of it was, and the way that you you're like, so apparently there's this guy that's house sitting, and then a body shows up at the house and he feeds it to the dog. That, that was like the synopsis. That is what they say the movie's about. Yeah. For the plot. That's not what the movie's about, really. I mean, it it kind of is, but the dog features a lot less prominently than I thought it would. I I think they thought 
Because the dog scene is the gross out humor, quote unquote, of the movie. Yeah, kind so, of. So they were yeah. trying to advertise it on the gross out scene. Probably. And, and I guess it like kind of ties yeah. together at the end in like a quirky, oh, that's weird. But yeah. it's not really about feeding the body to the dog. It's just that that ends up what hap- happens at some point, I guess. Yeah, it's much more about all of his friends and stuff along the way on this journey to feeding a dog a yeah, dead body. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> this this epic quest to give this dog a, a good bone and then another good bone and another good bone until it eats this whole body. Oh my god, please eat this body. The cops are coming, please. Please. I hate to bring you down, but we got a problem. Mr. Baldwin won't eat. And <laughs> it, it's two two main characters, I would say. There's Drew, yes. who's the guy who was asked to watch this like right-wing success book author's house. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he's got extreme, like, Jordan Peterson vibes where it's like, yeah. oh, well, don't you know that he's the success guy? Like, he'll, He's the he'll Joe Rogan you, guy. He's yeah. the alpha male. He'll he'll teach you how to be a, a real dude. Uh, and then his friend, slash oh. ex-friend, who shows up yeah. door-to-door salesman at the house, Kamal. So it's... Yes. It's basically Harold and Kumar hide a body, is what we were thinking as we were watching it. And, yeah. and the wacky situations that happened throughout a Harold and Kumar movie. Mm-hmm. But with a way darker tone. <laughs> yes. It's got... It still kind of has a little bit of that. It's basically... It is the Hale, Harold and Kumar hide a body. But like I said, way darker tone and a lot more... Um, like a lot less energy. And that's not yeah. necessarily bad. But just a lot drier in the humor and stuff. Like at first you were kind of going... Oh, uh, is this just going to be, like, the Adam Sandler version of, like, a, a quirky... A quirky murder movie. Murder yeah. movie. Because, like, it, it has them, they show up, and they're, like, doing this jerk-off they're, motion at each other. They're air-jerking each other off, which is a very Adam Sandler joke. Yes. Yeah. A- and another delivery guy shows up, and it's kind of just, oh, it's awkward and cringe, and it's just kind of, uh how does that feel? Right? Oh, man. Yeah, they're, they're really right? jacking him. Do you see that? What are you, you digging for... Yeah, yeah dig it. What? No, don't stop on my account. <laughs> Love that shit. Oh, hell yeah, Love brother. Working. But in general, the humor is a lot drier than that. And I actually appreciated yeah. a lot of it. I don't think it was an amazing movie, but it was it was very competent for the most part. It's definitely one of those films where I don't think the jokes land until you feel more comfortable with the characters. Yes. Because they, they start off too early where I'm like, I fucking hate these people. Mm-hmm. I don't care yeah. what they're doing because I don't like them. So why would I think this is funny? <laughs> the The problem is I the something about the beginning is yeah. there's it's all about the setups. There's a lot of really, really mm-hmm. good setups, but the characters themselves don't like they're not immediately charming like you said in any way like no i i i don't know if it's partially script or if it's partially the actors or if it's both together cuz i think the director also did the writing yes yeah. um and and it might have just been like as you got more comfortable and allowed yourself to get more wild it, it yeah, became but I, more open and fun, but that, like, beginning part where you're like, okay, how do I do this? What am I doing? How am I setting things up? But I feel like some of that has to be on, again, like, the actors not quite selling the characters enough right out of the gate, or the script yeah. not carrying it enough early on. Because I do think that, yeah, it, it definitely gets better as you get more used to those characters. And I think the writing becomes better, too, slowly I think it over does. time. Like, yeah. Because you start getting into more of the actual jokes. Like, because all the beginning is just set up. Mm-hmm. And they needed to have more jokes in the beginning also. It needed rather to be broken than just up a bit up. more, yeah. Like, they could have paced it out better, and they could have done more to actually, like, sell the interesting aspects of the characters early on. And I think they don't white do enough for that so i think that that is partially on the director still like that's still a downside right i mean first movie so oh yeah no i'm not saying that it's terrible yeah 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 
where this is nitpicky because in general I would say like this is a seven out of ten movie. I, I think this is a perfectly fine indie yeah. film. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah like it, it's. I'm, I'm trying to think like. So the the main premise, of course, is that a body shows up at yes. this house that Drew is is watching while the owner is mm-hmm. gone, and then the whole joke is that the situation escalates from there. Yeah, so it's which just, is a very typical kind of situation yeah so like or story if you want to make it dark then you need to add to the body count as it keeps raising or you need to do yes. something really absurd with the body that shows up and both of those things happen mm-hmm. i, I would just say takes a long time to get there yeah it takes a while to get there and i wouldn't say it all necessarily lands when it does get no there. no not all of it yeah. i was thinking that more of it would be around like the dog like try because of how central they made it like trying to get it to eat enough or like the dog pulling bones out of the ground after they'd had it and like people show it up in the dog like having like a leg in the background it'd be funnier if like yeah if drew and kamal deal with the situation but then the dog ruins it yeah like Like, that's kind of what i thought it was gonna go from the premise and the way that it was sold it felt like that would be more of it. Like, that they had kind of gotten the dog to eat some of it. Yeah. And then, like, throw the rest in a hole. But then the dog, like, keeps, like I said, like, cops mm. come by and the dog's, like, got a hand. And they're, like, playing fetch. Like, oh, oh, okay, whoop, whoa, we're just playing fetch. It's his favorite squeaky toy. Like A, a dog's you know. breakfast took that route, I would yes. say. Which, yes. Which is a different route for sure. Mm-hmm. And, and this is, like, it almost feels like the dog is more metaphorical in some way, but I don't know what the metaphor is. That's the other problem. I, yeah, so, I don't like, think that it... I think that it's just convenience. It's just there for a little bit. I don't... Yeah. I, the dog is so, like, side to everything else that's happening. It's really weird that that's the name of the movie. Because this yeah. is called... Do we even mention... I don't uh, know I did. did. Yeah, Feeding Mr. Yeah, Baldwin. F- yeah, Feeding Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, Mr. Baldwin is a, a bulldog. Is their bulldog. It's yeah. a really cute little puppy. Um, mm-hmm. But, so, all right, Kamal shows up. Uh, and he goes, like, oh, I haven't seen you in forever, Kamal. Like, it's good to have you here. Uh, yeah. Do you remember me from high school? And he's like, what the? No. I don't know. That no, was, like, 20 no. years ago, man. I don't fucking... And, like, he's like, yeah, yeah, in class, sure, huh? Although, I actually think they pay this off a fair bit. Because it, it doesn't quite make sense for a long time. Where it doesn't at all, because Kamal's just kind of like, I don't fucking know you, man. I don't don't even know this dude. What the hell? Uh, But then it it turns out later that they were best friends, and Kamal's just mad at him because he, with a group of douchebag jock dickheads, Mm. uh, harassed Kamal's family, even though they were friends. So he he felt so disjointed and and abused, I guess, by the situation that he transferred to a different school. Yeah, yeah, and and like, and so he's pretending okay. not to know him because but, he but, doesn't. But we, the audience, mad. don't know that. So no, so it's a little weird because you're like, why is Kamal agreeing to this? Because <laughs> it's just because yeah. Kamal gets ra- roped into some shit in this movie. It would make more sense from a storytelling perspective if they set up earlier that they knew each other. And this and, is what yeah. I mean about how the early start of this movie has some pacing problems because if they had set up some more of that kind of thing that they had more of a relationship and that Kamal's just hiding it and different things like that, it would give more mystery and like pull you in more Mm. in the beginning of the movie because in the beginning it feels very much like things happening and really dry humor. So it's kind of like, really really slow and we weren't sure at first if it was they were trying to make jokes even it was like is this i I wasn't sure if they were doing a setup for anything if it was funny but it was definitely a i'm gonna check my phone moment yeah for like like the uh, first 20 so minutes of this movie for sure but uh, kamal comes in tries to sell him on these knives yes and they're having this big conversation there's actually some like pretty good moments of Kamal selling knives to people and like, you know, I can throw in some scissors like, well, what about work on 100% commission. What please. about the fish that opens up the bottles? I literally only make money on commissions. Please buy the fucking knives. <laughs> yes, yeah, like he's like, listen, please, I work on 100% commission. 
So how much should I put you down for? The extended chef's arsenal? Perhaps the nuclear family traditional set? Hey, either way, I'll throw in a pair of scissors that can cut through a penny on the house. Thanks, man, but I, 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 just, I just can't really afford any right now, you know? Like, maybe if I get this job, I, I can totally... Playing hardball, huh? All right, how about this? I'll throw in the fish that you've been looking at. That opens bottles. Eh? That is a pretty cool bottle opener. Life of the party here. This is kind of selling me on this. I don't know. Work on 100% commission, you know? God, I, I'm really excited. I want to see that actor in more things. Uh, I think his name was uh, Anil Mark Sahayim. Mm-hmm. And he's great. In this he was movie. good in this. Like, yeah, I, I really honestly am surprised he's not bigger. Because this was a really good showing for him. Yeah, he was definitely the best character. So he's trying to sell these knives to this dude. They have a good setup here for that 100% also. Because mm-hmm. then much later on, like... So the weird right-wing grifter kind of dude that uh, he's trying to get in the good graces of. Uh, here's the other side of why he's so big into, like, burying the body. Because they've yeah. got to have, like... So you kind of get Kamal's thing eventually where it's like, oh, well, they used to be best friends, so he's trying to reconnect to his friends. So you get his motivations eventually. Yeah. The main character's motivation is that this right-wing grifter dude is living in a big mansion with, like, servants and everything, and he goes, holy shit, if I can house-sit with this guy, like, maybe I can get in his entourage, and, like, then I can... Because he wants to get rich, Get a hookup, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he's going... He says to his girlfriend in the beginning, I'm almost 30 and I haven't done anything with my life. My, I, Might as I'm well put me in the 30. grave right now. <laughs> I'm almost 30. I'm basically dead. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm nearly 30, I can't be wow, this guy might as well just jump in the grave. 30? Mm-hmm. <sighs> strike now. Strike that out of here. I'm, I'm half, foot half in the grave. I Nothing to show for it. I work at this, like, shitty oh, furniture sales store, and I, I'd like to get a better job and have, like, real money. So he's... He's desperately trying to, like, schmooze his way in with some rich dude. And, and he's very desperate. Which is He's extremely very awesome. obvious throughout the film. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy tells him, so uh, I got a real special package coming by. And uh, when she's here, you know, you can bring her up to my bedroom or... Actually, I mean, you can just leave her in the garage, too. It's not like she can say no anymore. <laughs> like, there's all these innuendos, of course. This is very tropey, very, you know, it's it's what you expect. Because it's, it's supposed very... to set up, like, a, a, a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. And that's a comedy and it does. classic. Comedy classic. Yeah. I almost forgot. <clears throat> okay, so something, uh, well, someone may be arriving before I get back. Special arrangement. Uh, international arrangement. Oh. Which could bring Ever. about some unfortunate misunderstandings if not uh-huh. handled uh-huh. with a clear and focused mind. You feel me? Uh, and I wasn't sure if it was going to pay off, but it did add a mystery throughout the film until mm-hmm. the eventual payoff. Yeah, I actually thought they did a really good job of that, because Mm. even three quarters of the way through the movie, we were both still discussing, like, so how exactly do you think this is going to resolve? Because we've got some ideas, and there are definitely, like, some clues to a few different ways, and the ways that it, like, hints at are all obvious, Mm -hmm. but they're different, so you're kind of like, They actually have a few different ways this can resolve, because they add a lot of characters in over time as this movie escalates. There's just an escalating amount of cast of, like, well, it could be this guy, it could be this person, it could be that, maybe it's this guy. Who the fuck is this weirdo? Yeah, like, there's a lot of very weird people that keep coming by the house. Uh, Because Kamal comes by, and then, uh, who's next? Well, so first of all, I want to say, this is probably a good point. To mention the rest of this is going to be spoilers if you want to watch this i don't normally Fair. say yeah that during our podcast but we have before i think for two dollars the mystery is good and it's worth watching in in my opinion at least to the point if you're yeah. interested at this point maybe go check it out yeah i would yeah. i would hesitantly say that you're okay to check this out i will say yeah. that there's like 
one or two jokes that kind of are yes. maybe a little homophobic edging on that kind of thing. There's a couple of jokes that just don't land. Like there, it's mm-hmm. not it's not perfect, but, but this is far from a but perfect. But I want to say film. we're definitely going to get into it at this point. So, but yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. if and you're interested, <laughs> and I would say that it's a worthwhile yeah. enough film that mm-hmm. it's if if this all sounds interesting, you might want to watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. So just to just to break that for a moment, um, so. Whoever shows up next, I think it's the um, because the box gets delivered. The, yeah, because the, the delivery found. guy shows up well. Uh, Kamala's while selling Kamala's the knives, there, yeah, and they're air jerking each other off. I think after look, sometimes you air jerk <laughs> off a bro. All right, it, it, when you're really good friends, yeah. I I think it's the neighbor. The neighbor shows up at the door and he's like, yes. "Hey." Who the fuck are you? Lance isn't here. Should I tell him? I'm part of the neighborhood watch, and that fucker always gets my mail, and I have to come here and grab it. Yes. This was a great setup that I didn't realize was set up for the longest time. Because we were thinking this guy eventually. We were thinking this guy was like an FBI agent or something posing as a neighbor. Yes. Because there's a body, and on the news previously, like ten minutes before, they were saying there's a human trafficking ring going around. Just mm-hmm. to get that idea in your head. So when yes. they're introducing characters, you're like, so is this guy looking into the human trafficking? Like, or is this guy is the human just, trafficker? Is he the or... trafficker or is he just a neighbor? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So uh, before this guy shows up, actually, is, they do find the body. Yes. The, the delivery comes in. They put it in the bedroom. Uh, they put it in, like, this big box. Mm-hmm. And then a little while later, the dog's running through the house with a thong. And they're like, is that a thong? And so they follow, like, where the, they're like, oh, my God, what did the dog get into? So they follow, like, mm-hmm. a, kind of a trail of destruction. Like, there's, like, some styrofoam and, and stuff pulled out. And they're like, okay, well, oh, it got into that box. And they look yeah. and they're like, oh, is that, is that a, that's, a, that's a dead body. That's a body. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a dead body. And so they're like, oh, yeah. um, hmm. Uh, so maybe, what do we do about this? Maybe it's not. No, that's yeah. a dead body. No, that's a, yeah, yeah. They go like maybe it's not, and then it shows them like with the box fully opened, and there's just this whole corpse, yeah. and they're like, no, yeah, nah, no, I'm pretty sure that's dead body. Nah, and then you hear, body, yeah. of course, knock, 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 neighborhood yeah. watch guy, and this dude is, you caught on to it. I didn't realize how much of a clue it was that he's seen. And he goes, you know. Here's all of his mail because the mail constantly goes to the wrong houses, but. You know, it's got to go to the right place. You know what I'm saying? And, like, constantly doing that to them. And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever, man. And they just uh-huh. dismiss it because they've got a they body. they got a body they to, to deal get with. this guy out of here. fucking deal with this guy, yeah. And he doesn't quite hammer it that yeah. much, which is nice because it's subtle. Because I totally didn't pick up on, oh, the mail switched mm-hmm. as, like, a possible thing that could happen. Because it unfortunately gets delivered to me by mistake. We have dunderheads running our postal service here in the local area. It's a very small, innocuous thing, you know? It makes sense. Yeah. And there's so much different things that are set up. Like, the second half has a lot of payoff. It really does make the first half... uh, Like, as much as I think the first half has some pacing problems and needed to draw you in better... All of the setups that it does are really good, and it has good payoffs. So, like, the yeah. second half of it definitely goes way up. So, uh, Marta, the cleaner, the, the mm-hmm. housekeeper, uh, is trying to clean the, the master bedroom suite, which is where the body is. And Kamal dumps it out the window. Yes. To hide it. And then they bring it into the garage, and as they're bringing it into the garage, these two creepy Girl Scouts show up, which were also set up earlier. Because the, yeah. the owner of the house, Lance Bryant, hates these Girl Scout fucking losers so much that he has, like, a pellet gun to shoot at them to get them out of his fucking property. Little bitches come calling and asking for handouts while you're here house-sitting? I to use this on their asses. Uh, we're still talking about Girl Scouts, right? Now, this may be air power, but let me tell you something. This can put a hole the size of a grapefruit through a squirrel from 90 yards away. I, I love the setup of what an asshole he is as a yep. right-wing grifter. Where he's like, what does he call them exactly uh, again? Like the success losers? Like success suckers. Suckers. Yeah, they, I think it's success, success suckers. Success is what out it was. of other people instead of creating their own 
Like, yes, because they're begging. Well, they're going house to house begging for handouts. And it's it's a great, like, that's a really yeah. good commentary on the weirdo, like, success Wh- grifters. Which is funny, because when uh, he hears Kamal on the phone later, he's like, who the fuck is that? Oh, that's just a guy here selling knives. I told you to get the gun and get those fucking success suckers out of here. He probably is on a 100% commission or something, yes. you know? <laughs> 100% Which, commission. of course, he'd said, I'm on 100% commission. <laughs> I gotta sell these knives. It's like, that was one of the best jokes for me, because it's like, okay, as much as they're setting this dude up as being a total douchebag and showing it, it's just very funny that he nailed that one part. So, so Drew tries to get the Girl Scouts out of there so they can hide the body mm-hmm. again. And he just, like, gives them $2 and takes all of their cookies. And, yeah. Which is... Not how much those cookies cost. No. And they're just sitting there, they're like, it's a really great scene of the little girl, like, trying to hold onto them. And he's just, like, pulling. He's like, no, I'm getting the cookies. And then just pulls them. And the girl's just totally silent. They're both just, like, dead-eyed stares straight ahead. And he, like, rips all of the cookies out of their hands. And then just gives them, like, two dollars. Meanwhile, Kamal stuffs the body in the garage. Yep. In the garage, the guy has a vintage photo booth. Yeah. And so while well, they're doing the body into the photo booth, of course they bump the, like, turn it on thing. Now they've got all these photos of both of them, like, with basically the body. looks like looks they're like having the... a gangbang with the body. It definitely looks like that. That's gross and weird and funny. Which is gross and weird. But, it, like, that's that's the huge, that's exactly yeah. what this movie's going for, yeah. Yep. So they get hammered, mm-hmm. um, Kamal and Drew, and the next morning Kamal's gone. So Drew's like, that yeah, motherfucker yeah. left me here to deal with this body all by myself. That piece of shit. Yeah, come on. It's because they're waiting for Marta. Marta is sitting there, yes. like, very slowly beating a rug. Like, mm-hmm. she's cleaning out a rug, but she's doing it, like, one. Thump. Yeah. And, and, and I then Kamal's just like, hey, do you want a fucking beer? <laughs> and, and, like, <laughs> like, the thumping almost feels like the thumping in your head when you're trying to mm-hmm. think about some crazy shit that's been going on i'm like that's a cool touch i think yes it was yeah no. they're, they're so on edge and like wanting to hurry and they're stuck just sitting here just like Waiting. staring at this woman yeah. like fuck 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 so, so in the morning drew sets off the alarm at the door mm-hmm. which was another setup like yes. there's, there's so many good setups and and the payoff is that the security guy shows up it's like, hey, man, your fucking alarm got set off. And then the power got cut. And that means, like, somebody probably broke in and cut the power. Only an idiot would do that. Like, some, yeah, or somebody's like... stealing, you know. So mm-hmm. I'm going to look around. And he goes into the photo booth, and Drew's trying to stop him, but the body's gone. In a classic Inexplicably. Setup, yeah. yeah. But Drew doesn't know Just this. Like, so he's he's thinking about, like, killing the security guy with a hammer. To keep hiding things. Because it's escalate. Now things are yeah. escalating a lot, but, yes. But because the body wasn't found, he drops the hammer. He's like, oh, goofy shit. No, you can't have it. I'm not... We're not selling the photo booth. Yaha. But the security yeah, officer... the guy was really interested in the photo yeah. booth. He's like, oh, man, these photo booths are so cool. The security officer keeps playing a prank on him about, like, tripping. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, ha, ha, ha. You know, I'm so clumsy. Oh man! Like if I had a nickel for every time I fell onto a claw hammer and you, died. You, you know, my uh, my twin brother always <laughs> yes. tells me about this. Oh yeah, he always tells me, oh, you're gonna trip and fall on a claw hammer that somebody drops to murder you, and then it's gonna enter the back of your skull and kill you. Oh fuck! And then it happens, and he dies. He's like, I have another fucking body to deal with. Oh my god! Oh no! I can't. I can't let Mister Lance. Uh, oh god, what's his last name again? Uh, Brian. Brian. Bryant, yes, yeah. yeah, I can't, I can't let Mr. Mr. Lance Bryant find out that I've left all these bodies around his house, I gotta cover for him so I can get my, my cool right-wing grifter draw- job and make infinite money. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, so Drew throws the security guard's body in a shed. Yeah. We'll deal with that later, he says. And, and then yeah. he starts digging around in Lance's, like, bedroom, and he finds some pictures of a very badly photoshopped lady... And, and Lance naked in fursuits. Yes. And they had the suits. They didn't need to Photoshop it, right? I yeah, mean, they yeah. Photoshopped it really bad and it didn't work that well because of yep. it. And I, like you said, like they have, you went, oh, that's too bad they didn't have the suits and they just Photoshopped it. And then it zooms out and it shows the suits. And we're like, they could have done that. 
just do the photo. Yeah, they could have just done Man, the photo. Man, like, come on. But as he's walking out with this photo, a, a guy with a gun, like, pops out. Or, or, no, he's just sitting there in the room, isn't he? He's like, hey, are you Lance? No, no, nah, man, yes. I'm not Lance. Oh, because if you were, I had something important to tell you, bud. I, who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah. And it's like this mob guy. And then he, he hands, uh drew his card and it's like yeah i'm from the retirement home if you need me give me a call <laughs> yeah we'll give you an offer that you're not allowed to say no to uh something an offer you will not excuse i will make you an offer you will not excuse what what refuse he will make you an offer okay. you will not refuse You'll not excuse, yes. Because this guy is, it turns out, he walks outside yeah. and goes back to the van. And then there's an older guy inside of the van. Because this guy is just, like, 30. Yeah. And there's an older guy in the van, and he's like, hey, we uh, need you to drive me here, too. And he's like, no, man, like, I gotta have the van back at the retirement home by six. Kind of thing. So he's yeah. the driver for the retirement home that, like, this old retired mobster has paid off. Yep. To be his new henchman as he re-enters organized crime, which is honestly an amazing bit. Like, just a fucking fantastic bit. It's and the mob good. guy is talking about how his daughter has gone missing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was the whole, yeah. So that's why thing. he's there. That's why yeah. he's there. So now we have creepy neighbor with mail mixed up. We have... Mobbed up retirement dude. Yeah. We have a random door-to-door uh, -door knife salesman. The Girl Scouts. Who happen the g creepy Girl Scouts. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to get another character, because we also get yes. the... Yes, uh, because um, the immigration agent shows up. Yes. To talk about the human trafficking ring, because he suspects Lance is human trafficking. Yeah. Which a right-wing grifter, success bro, dude bro guy, human trafficking... I don't know. Sounds oh, made no. up. Definitely not a guy who keeps calling back to the house and going, so, has my uh, special international Why doesn't he just arrived? fucking say what he ordered? <laughs> this guy. Well, because what he ordered really sucks, Oh, though. it sucks. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> oh, anyways. The immigration agent starts talking to Drew after he realizes that he's just house-sitting. He's like, oh, mm -hmm. man. All right. Well, I got to talk to Lance. I think that guy's like... Look, I don't want to give you details, but here's all the details. All the details. <laughs> here's every detail possible. Look, yeah. they're having sex. They're doing the Caesar salad. It's very common. Everybody knows about the Caesar salad. They it's all do very it. very illegal maneuver. I can't get into details, but I'm just going to tell you this. It's a global trafficking organization that specializes in sexual exploitation. That Are sounds like details. Yeah. You mean like mail-order brides? <laughs> no, I don't mean mail-order brides hello to brides they enter that stuff in my choice companies like uh foreignflames.com are actually sanctioned they got sponsors they got a website oh yeah. a webmaster i'm talking yeah. about women children Ugh. men men like you and me having sex against our free will you and i in a room performing caesar salad on the side at the chicken if you know what i mean that's hey, a position i that's a that's an illicit position that's what? very common now and has been is since it, 1997. Is it common? What? <laughs> yeah, he he says that it's a very illegal sexual maneuver, which was a great line. There's, yep. there's a few. Uh, no, also, um, no, he couldn't do the Caesar salad. Lance is a pillar of the community. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was a. Yeah. No way. Not. Not. Not Lance. Pillar of the community. I uh, yeah. I wanted to say one of the notes that I wrote down was the security guard had a line too, where he goes, "Oh, uh, hey, like, well, I mean, it might have been a, you know, somebody coming in here and cutting the power. It might have been a classic like BTK situation." And he's like, "What the fuck?" Are you? He's like, "You know, bind, torture, kill." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you gotta, you gotta pay like extra for that?" Or yeah, like, <laughs> like the way that he delivered it was like, "Oh, you know, like some people will do this kind of thing, don't you know?" Yep. So. Kamal gets pissed at Drew at some point here and then wanders off and says, fuck this. I'm not, I'm going mm -hmm. back to my knife selling gig. I'm not helping this asshole. It, it, I think it's because he shows back up with 
uh, coolers because he he didn't leave to to leave Drew you know dry and and dealing with the situation. He went to go no, get stuff he hid the to body. deal with it. Yeah, and and he comes back and Drew's all pissy. He's like, well, if you're not gonna fucking let me you know help you, then go to hell, Drew. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, dude, I don't have to be involved in any of this, and you don't have to be involved in this either. I told you, call the cops, tell them that your, like, right-wing grifter boss asshole is yeah. selling human bodies or whatever the shit this is, and then walk away from it. I'm going to do the same. And he's like, no, man, I need your help. And then he helps him, and Drew's just being a dick Th- about this it. This almost reminds me of, like, a Napoleon Dynamite scene with Pedro. A bit. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's, it's honestly pretty good but he he goes um over to uh bong neighbor who is also yes. the neighborhood watch guy that showed up earlier and the we're like mail and and this well, guy, we didn't know it was bong neighbor at the time at the time because he shows up and he's very straight laced and he's like listen i'm part of the neighborhood watch and if anything untoward is happening here i need to know about it and he's like very suit straight laced guy but also like weirdly creepy yeah, so we're like, this guy might be a serial killer, right? Yes. Yeah. And and he's constantly pressing Kamal for, like, what they were doing in the house, if he found a body. <laughs> yeah, and then he goes... Oddly specific things. And why you say he's bong neighbor is because he goes like, well, listen, um, I need to make myself some, like, tea and maybe some uh, herbal remedies. Do you want to come inside with me and enjoy some herbal mm-hmm. remedies? Some medication? Some and he's like, I, I don't know, I, I guess. Like, uh, can I sell you these knives and talk to you about them? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might, you know, I think I'm gonna buy the whole set. Like, oh, okay. And then he, yeah. it cuts to him, and he's like, all right, I'm just making my medicine. And he's just doing a fucking grips off this bong, and you're like, okay, yeah, and this is pretty th- good. This is where like the again, Harold and Kumar hide a body. This mm-hmm. is so Harold and Kumar. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. man. Because he's sitting there trying to sell the dude knives as the dude's just getting absolutely baked. <laughs> yeah. And he, yeah, and then he he gives him some herbal tea, and he's like, hey, like, you know, this is some really good, powerful tea. You should probably have some of it. And he's drugged Kamal. Yep, so that he can interrogate him. Yes. Yeah. So again, we're like, is the neighbor an FBI guy? Is he a serial killer? And this is where it started... The cogs started turning and like, oh, he was the one who was supposed to get the body. Yeah. This oh. is where it was like, oh, wait, the male mix. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's starting so to come like, together. Oh, he's the sex trafficker. And because he's constantly like, well, you didn't get a package. You should tell people about that. And we're like, okay. Yeah, he is definitely like some weird tortured dude. And, you know. Yeah. And it could go really dark from here if it really wanted yes. to. But instead, Kamal goes to the bathroom and jumps out, like, climbs out a window and leaves. Yeah, pretends he has to vomit. Yeah, There's yeah. actually, oh god, the, the vomit thing is really, really good, where he's like, oh man, you know, I think, I, that, he hit me hard, like, I think I gotta go vomit. And he gets up and he's like, yeah, no, uh, that's okay, you can just go to the bathroom down the hall. Wait, not in my robe! <laughs> like, and that almost, that almost felt like that was robe. ad-libbed. Yes. Because it was so, like, sudden, and it didn't feel like a scripted thing. It was very funny. It was a very wild turn for that character. Yeah. That was, like, because he's got, like, this very kind of conniving aura about him, and he's Mm -hmm. very, like, calm and collected, but kind of, you know, always prying for information, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, fuck my robe! (laughs) No, don't don't vomit on that! Hey, hey, hey! Yes, come on. Uh, uh, let's see. I gotta puke. <laughs> Not on my robe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And uh, going back to the um, he's not FBI. What is it? He's like a, a Department of uh, Immigration. Immigration. Yeah. Um, he's talking about you know all these countries. They he all, was a they, dick. They import. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Oh, he was a dick. That's true. he was a dick. Yeah, no, that was the okay. I didn't the get dick. that. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So he uh, he's saying like you know this country, their two major imports are like corn and hot white pasty euro ass. And you know what the Ukraine's chief exports are? Weapons grade plutonium and hot white pasty euro ass. <laughs> 
Yeah. Like, okay, man. <laughs> anyway, if you see Lance, uh, let me know. I'm going to get out of here, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. None of this is panning out. Yeah. So so then Drew, like, I I, I think he, he goes back to the body in the shed. And he's trying to figure out what he wants to do. Now two bodies, because the security mm-hmm. guy. And he finds this, like, mace can on the ground that the security guy had. And he sprays himself in the eyes like a dumbass. Yeah. So he runs to the bathroom. And when he's in the bathroom trying to clean out his eyes, he finds the housekeeper, Marta, in the tub. He's like, I'm not again. Oh, god damn it. A third fucking body. No. <laughs> but she's just having a nap. And she's, she's like, worried that he's going to tell... Lance, that she was sleeping on the job. He's like, oh no. Because she's got too many jobs. And, and, she's and this causes so hard. a whole total breakdown mm-hmm. of Drew. So Samara's like, no, no, it's fine. Here, come here. And gives him a hug. He's like, yeah, no, it's okay. Sometimes you need to break things to like put them all together. Just like that toilet that you're sitting on right now. I was just cleaning shit out of it before I fell asleep. Oh, she's like hugging him with the gloves. Hugging him with the gloves. Wearing, like patting his, his face. Cheek, like, sort of like, oh, you poor little boy. You good boy. Like, it's okay. And it's like, he's like, oh, um, no. Hmm. Actually, you, you were just doing that toilet, huh? <laughs> but also there's very like, you know, Sometimes you just have to chop up your problems like she's, and she's put them in the to cut little the boxes yeah. and bury them in the backyard. Inadvertently, she's saying. Compartmentalize. Hey, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so then Kamal comes back. Drew and Kamal talk it out about their problems of friendship and how they were dicks to each other. Or at least Drew was a dick to Kamal in high school. And they, they work it all out. Which is enough for them to figure out, hey, maybe we should cut up those bodies. Yeah, you get the reveal of Kamal going like, hey, this is why I pretended like I didn't know you. Yeah. Like, you were such a fucking dickhead back in high school. Mm-hmm. We were we were supposed to be best friends and you betrayed me. Anyway, you want to chop up these bodies? Yeah, alright. Yeah, okay. <laughs> My idea to put this body it into was a various good idea. coolers was a good idea. You're right, Kamal. Because <laughs> he, he did say that, too. Like, when he brought all the coolers, the guy's yeah. like, well, how is it supposed to fit in there? And he's like, well, she won't fit in one container, but she might fit in a couple. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Breaking Bad did something very similar to this with goofy situations of dark humor and mm-hmm. cutting up bodies and stuff. And yeah, like, early on when it was yeah. actually a comedy mm-hmm. of it. Before it when became that, just that a the, loud yelling thriller, yeah, yeah, it was meant to be a comedy originally. Like it, it was I, that I'm, was the original. Setup. I'm definitely getting Breaking Bad vibes from parts of this, especially when they yeah. get into like the gory body stuff at the end. In the early yeah. thing parts of it, for sure, it, it feels like like the early parts of Breaking Bad. Like oh yeah, kind of yeah, half comedy. Yeah, I yeah. we have a lot of positive things to say for this movie, to be honest. Overall, yeah, I think say. so. I yeah, I think that it's the problem that I have mostly is that it's like all of these things, but it's also worse than all of these things. It's, it's a little more amateur, I'd say. Right? Yeah. If that makes sense, yeah. like it's it's not that it's bad at any of them, but also other things. I I would always recommend like another dark comedy mm-hmm. over this one for the most part, if that makes sense. Like it's yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean that this is delivered badly. It's just not the best version of this kind of thing. So after they cut up the bodies, they try to feed it to Mr. Baldwin because that's the title of the movie. Yes. And they need you gotta to get around to that. You gotta get gotta to the title eventually, I guess. And a lot of our movies don't. So, <laughs> you like, know, I gotta give it to feeding Mr. But, Baldwin for that. But Mr. Baldwin's being a picky bitch. Yeah, he's being a real picky bitch about it too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, got it. Man, he's just being such a picky bitch about it. <laughs> that's such a great line. Kamal is by far the best character. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to I feed mean, this dog, but he's a picky bitch. I'm telling you, that actor did such a good job. Mm-hmm. Yes, oh, man. he's definitely the high point. And so they end up feeding the two bodies to the dog. Yeah, they have to, like, mime eating. Yeah, to, to get it. It's just gross out humor for the audience. Yeah. And I'm like, whatever. Um, it was fine. It's fine. So as they're walking back in, they're like, okay, we did it. The bodies are gone. Lance doesn't know about it. There's no no uh, witnesses. We're good. I think we're in the clear. Yeah, because they, they yeah. even go, oh, well, God, what was it? Something else. There was something else that happened. They go, you know, I think we're, I think we're good. Like, actually, wait, wait, wait. Like, 
Yeah, everything's kind of resolved, huh? Yeah, we did it. And then the mail order bride shows up. Yeah, as they're sitting there having this conversation, in the background is this woman sitting on the couch going like... And and uh, we, the audience, sir, are sirs? like, who the fuck is that? Sirs? <laughs> sirs? <laughs> yep. Yep. So oh, this, this is apparently what Lance ordered, uh, was a yeah. Russian bride who was here of her own free will, so it's not... Not technically really sex human, trafficking. human trafficking. It's just gross mm-hmm. in a different way. And they, this is where they go like, oh my god, oh my god, what do we do? And that's where Kamal's like, nothing. It's fine. Yeah, we just... bodies are gone. We just tell her that he'll be here tomorrow. It's even, yeah. it's even better. We say that he's back tomorrow, and you've now done your job where he was worried about his package. Yep. She, there she is. You got it. You're all good. Problem solved. Yep. Pro- all problems are all solved. Problems are not all solved. <laughs> so as they're dealing with that situation, uh, there's a knock on the door. So Drew goes to answer yeah, the door, like, yeah. and it's the Girl Scout leader. We're in, a, in an incredible twist. Somebody that we've never seen before. What the fuck is this? And, well, and, it, and it, you don't connect that it's the Girl Scout leader at first. It's just this really big woman. Really big, aggressive pigtails. lady. Yeah. Yes. She goes, hey, motherfucker. And you're like, what? And he's like, do you live here? Y- yeah. I mean, no, but yeah. I, well, I mean, I here's your... And then she pulls out the money and we both went, oh, okay. Yeah, that's got to That was set up. Now it's payoff. Gotcha. Yeah, you, like this, you ripped off my fucking girl. <laughs> what do you think you were going to do, huh? Just steal them cookies? They're 350 each. You piece of shit. We'll give you the cookies back. No, it's got your gross fucking virgin pasty white hands all your, over your them. Baby now hands. they're all... F- yeah, she goes like, those those cookies were filled with dazzle and love and now they're spilled with despair in your baby hands. <laughs> huh? Yeah, somebody order a pizza with bitch on top of it? <laughs> oh, listen, lady, it was a busy day. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Yeah, I appreciate I- you called me a lady. I appreciate that. Okay? But you know what? You weren't thinking, you weren't thinking that those troops also had an amateur mixed martial artist as a leader. I, I didn't Throw know that. Down. I didn't know that. Throw down. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I, I, I haven't opened the cookies yet, okay? I can go get them for you. There's three boxes. You can take them with you. And things are fu- You think I want those cookies? Take look at me. Look at me in the eyeballs. I don't want your fucking cookies. No, not after you had your little hands over them, your little baby hands. Your oh, man. Blood. Those thin mints used to have dazzle in them. Now they got your little baby hands on him. Okay. Your man juice. Okay, what do you want from me then? What, you didn't expect an MMA fighter to come out, show up, you piece and of shit? And she beats the <laughs> shit out of him. Like, she is just... God, it's so good. It's really good, and she does it unarmed. Like, yeah. she dismantles this kid. Oh, it's so good. It's so So she's good. shit-kicking him for the money. So, so then, Drew grabs the pellet gun to threaten her. Mm-hmm. But as he's doing that, the mafia retirement home driver comes in with a gun. Well, first he tr- he tries to shoot her with it, but he trips. Oh, he's a dumbass, right? He trips. Yeah, he's terrible yeah. and trips, and so then she's like going to beat the shit out of him again, and yeah. then the mo- you hear the yeah the mob shows up with the old guy, and he's like, "Where's my granddaughter?" And at the same time, the immigration guy shows up with a gun, and he's like, "Hey, you're the wolf." Whoa, I didn't know you were still in the game, man. Holy shit, you're a legend. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying to get back into it. I know. And he's sitting there, he's like, I'm going to have to take in uh, Harold and Kumar here. They, they got to go go down to the station to me answer some immigration questions. And actually, since I've got a mafia guy here, I got a second gun. <laughs> so he pulls, has another to gun. He pulls out a second gun, which honestly is a really great bit. Like you said, is he just going to pull out a gun for every person that he needs to arrest? <laughs> and, and then at the same time, the security guard shows up, but he's dead. So it's his twin brother. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. The twin brother security guard shows up. Yes. And, and we got ourselves a good old fashioned Mexican standoff. Yeah, and he's got his mace, and he's telling the immigration guy, hey, you got a warrant? And the guy's like, shit. Shit. (laughs) (laughs) Which is honestly another really good bit. Like, this is the pay... This is the scene where everything pays off. It all pays off at once, and it's so good. There's some real pacing issues earlier in the movie, 
But if it was, if they cleaned up that early part, like, this part is almost 10 out of 10. Like, it's, mm-hmm. when you get to around this area, the rest of the movie's just gold. Like, it's really nice. Because they all end up shooting each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, except for the immigration guy. and Including, like, the, the mob guy shoots the Russian bride. Yep. Because including her. He holds her hostage, ends up shooting her. It's just a bloodbath. Just mm-hmm. an absolute nightmare. It's like a from t- uh, dusk till dawn situation, yes. and it's very funny. Uh, they, the immigration guy survives, and because he's got a he's about to take yeah. in Drew and Kamal for a, a statement because like they weren't necessarily part of any of this anyway. He just wanted to get questions to begin with. Like, God, I um, just needed to fucking get a question here. What the fuck was but, this? But then the mob guy tries to shoot him, so he, like, empties the clip into the mob guy on the ground. He's like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't care anymore. <laughs> He's like, you know what? I don't even need a statement. Fuck this. I'm leaving. And, and Drew and Kamal are like, wait, wait, wait. Can you help us hide the bodies at least? <laughs> and, his, and his response is, what do I look like a fucking warlock? <laughs> and he leaves. They're like, can you can you at least get rid of these bodies? And he's like, what, am I a fucking warlock? I'm not doing that. that. The bodies, you'll take care of the bodies too? What? You look like a fucking warlock? <laughs> 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 All right, I should probably start prepping the statement. What the fuck am I going to do? Five more minutes. Like, man, this is so much goddamn paperwork. I'm just an immigration dude. I don't need this shit anymore. And he just leaves. It's so good. And and then the neighbor shows up. I was going to say, here's the thing. There's still another character we yep. haven't had come in. Yep. Serial killer neighbor. So the neighbor shows up and he starts talking to them about like, hey man, look, just because a fucking package shows up at your door doesn't mean it's <laughs> yours. All right. That was my dead was body, like, you piece of shit. Shows up on this huge tirade. And honestly, I loved this twist because they set up so much that he's a serial killer Mm -hmm. or like a sex trafficker or something. And a lot of the other twist kind of stuff hasn't, Mm -hmm. it's it's been obvious enough. Like we kind of figured, oh, this guy's got like a mail order bride, right? Yes. Like they, they made that obvious enough that we could tell. They literally mailed and she died or something dumb, right? Maybe it was that, like there's, there's kind of some and ambiguity and we're like okay is it just that she died in the mail is it that like so there's a few things that are there but you can kind of get the gist of it so we're like okay well i mean this guy's almost certainly like one of two things he's either a serial killer or he's like the sex trafficker and or he's, something and he like didn't that. realize yeah. that she was dead something like that like he's obviously in something underworld. not really <laughs> we started thinking like what would be funnier yes and, and i was saying well maybe he just ordered a cadaver Right, because mm-hmm. we were saying well, maybe it was for medical reasons, and it was for yep. and, and like yes, that is way funnier. And it turns out that and is what happened. That is the way funnier thing is that he's like, well, like, hey, I know yeah. that it's not strictly legal to get a medical corpse off of the internet the way that I did, but like I'm doing important research for my PhD studies, and I I really like she donated her body to science, not like anybody killed her. I just mm-hmm. need my cadaver, and it cost me twenty thousand dollars so like you guys and they're like oh we fed it to the dog yeah we thought there was a weird situation we had to get rid of it i'm sorry you fed my twenty thousand dollar medical cadaver to your dog (laughs) wait no i know how to make this right (laughs) wait wait wait. hold up hold up we've got the perfect solution yeah like and so the dude's like losing his shit and he's gonna kill them kind of thing but they have they something. they happen to have a shed full cart. of dead bodies. He's like, you better have been preserving her properly, refrigerated. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa we've got a better option. How yeah, about four dead bodies or five? It's, There's a lot. a lot. There's a All lot right. of it's, dead it's bodies. More than at this you point. would think. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I think it's actually six. Yeah. There's the. Driver of the secure of the old folks' home. There's the, the mob guy. Old mafia guy. The Russian bride, the Girl the Scout, Scout group, leader, yeah. the security guy, security guy's twin brother, <laughs> which is well, they, they good fed bit. the security guy with. Oh the, yeah, I guess the, they the did. Yeah, yeah, so it's five, I think. It's so five. it's five. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but but that's like a hundred thousand dollars of internet cadaver, right? There you go, man. Like, yeah. he's like, oh, thank you, thank you so much. And he's like hugging them as over these dead bodies. Yep. 
And, and then it, it starts doing the outro. Drew is reading a letter to Lance about how much uh, Lance helped shape his life. And we, we find out that it's a letter from the Russian bride, supposedly, who was like, yes. look, I don't actually need to be here anymore. Thank you for bringing me to this country. Take my bag and all my belongings. <laughs> you've, made, you've made me discover myself, and I've decided that I want to turn over a new leaf and give away all of my current belongings for no reason. Um, and, and Like 9-11, I will never forget you, Lance. Yes! Yes! Like 9-11, I'll never forget. Freedom from the chains that bind me. Like 9-11, I will never forget Yes. Okay. That was the most incredible line I think I've ever heard in they, a movie. They could have just ended I, the movie there. I would they could have, they, That could have been the final ending for sure. Yeah. Uh, but then Drew declines the job at that point, said, fuck mm-hmm. this, I'm going back to my shitty furniture job. Uh, and it, it ends with, I guess, Mr. Baldwin burying some bones. Because yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, He's got like this pit, they're in an open pit of human skulls as he's like burying another bone in there. I guess, yeah. <laughs> Which is a, f- a fine enough bit. I, I don't know if that's like, because they never did explain what Lance did. And those bones, I, I don't know if those were part of the body situation or if that was a separate thing Lance was doing. And it wasn't really clear to it's, me as... it seemed like there were just two human skulls in there it seemed like it was just the it might the just be a people. joke but it would have been that, very yeah, yeah I was gonna say, I'm, I'm fine with it being a very funny bit of like yeah because because if the ending was lance is actually a serial killer would serial be killer funnier. like that's a pretty good yes if they'd made that more obvious actually that would have been that would funnier. be a perfect like touch ending of like yes. no actually that is what was happening one final comedy twist right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i anyway that's Feeding Mr. Baldwin, uh, a mm-hmm. random movie we stumbled upon, which is only on streaming that I know of. It's funny that we've now twice found a movie that is a bad indie movie, like bad, I mean, low budget indie movie. It's, I would say about, low budget more than bad, yeah. More than bad, yeah. I realize I should self-correct yeah. for that. But like what looks like a bad indie movie, mm-hmm. low budget kind of indie movie. That's about feeding a corpse to a dog. Yeah. And both of them have been really quite good. I, I think there there's a lot of interesting things going on in this movie. And a lot of, of what I would say are glimmers of of creative ideas. And yes. and some of them even pay off, which is way more yes. than some movies we watch. <laughs> so This is way better than 90% of the stuff that we watch for sure this yeah. does not deserve to be on the bad movie part of the podcast yeah but this is the nice thing is that every once in a while we discover a diamond in the rough and this is yeah maybe not a diamond but at least it's like a, a sapphire or something it, it's, it's interesting something that's Chinese, least, right yes. yeah i would ha- more recommend dog's breakfast over this that does have the entire crew of the thing? stargate like atlantis yes. you know <laughs> I mean, they're a little bit different quality, but also wise, for but similar setups. Yeah, yeah. And like, it was—it's so funny how similar those movies are in a way. In like being, I pretty. This movie didn't cop out on the "it was all a dream" like that movie, though. Yeah, that that movie ended on well, it didn't actually happen. Which uh... that movie had some. The ending of that movie was this, this one at least was pretty. like. We're ending on a bittersweet comedy thing, but also this character yeah. grew. Yes. Not a lot of yeah. movies even have character growth in them. No. That we watch, no. so... I don't know. Uh, anyway... Right, we gotta rate Mr. Baldwin. We gotta rate Mr. Baldwin. He's a cute little dog. He's a picky little bitch. <laughs> I was just gonna say he's a picky bitch out of ten. Picky bitch out of ten. Man, they gave him all these containers full of cool human remains that you can eat but he just won't eat it just won't do it he has to see that we're eating it first to be like oh i want it now oh mm, yeah oh, this froofy little bastard uh yeah I, I think that's a fair rating so he's a cute little uh like he's a cute little english bulldog he's very i, I think it, it's too bad they didn't have more of him in it because i do think that he was the perfect dog for this kind of a movie in that he yeah like playing playing up that picky bitch side like of it a cute slubby picky dog is perfect yes yeah. exactly something that's like really low energy and being like 
I Come eat, like, on, man. Guys, yeah. I can't eat two whole dead bodies. That's a lot of food. And <laughs> I, I think it's hard to get a bulldog, uh, I think, to be an interesting animal for the screen. Because they're, sure. they're just not very active, right? It, no. So, and, and this runs into a problem in a lot of our movies that have this mm-hmm. particular breed of dog for some reason. Yes. But they could have done something funnier with this. I, I liked kind of where they went with it. It's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, in yeah. general, I, 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 I like yeah. it. I just, I wi- the one thing I do wish, I, like I said, the pacing at the beginning could have been better. And I, I, I do honestly think that they mm-hmm. could have added more of the dog yeah. in a way and just had it be, because they really could play off how schlubby and slow the dog is yeah. for them trying to be like, they need a high energy dog that's going to eat a lot of meat. And then I, they've got this like schlubby, like picky dog. I'm a little sad dog. that this director isn't doing full length films. Cause yeah. after yeah. 10 years, I would love to see what this guy is doing. Absolutely. I think there's so much potential yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. As a first yeah. movie, this is very serviceable. Yeah. Uh, anyways, that's it for this episode. Again, having a lot... The simple promise of somebody who can write a line that is, like 9-11, I'll yeah. never forget. <laughs> like... Mm-hmm. That alone, I'm like, you... I want to see him cook. I let him cook. <laughs> I need to. I need more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little more of that. Thank you for listening. It's Rough Cuts on co-host. Rough Cuts on Blue Sky. Rough Cuts cast at gmail dot com. Yeah, or, and you can also, of course, support us on Patreon. Uh, we got a new patron recently, so appreciate that. Yeah, um, it does mean a lot. And you paid two whole dollars for this movie. I could have paid four. You know what? You could have. I think. I think and this I'll... is one. I'm like. You know what? I could have paid four. Yeah, that was pretty could have good. Paid four for this one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you for listening. We'll catch you next episode. So anyway, about that body, yeah. right? Do you want yeah. me to move some stuff for me? Yeah. And then, yeah, we're gonna. Okay. Yeah, I'll see you there. After yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh wait, sorry, I didn't stop recording. I'll sorry. bring my slice pro knives. Oh, I heard that those was... are legit. They're very. They will cut almost anything. Okay. Good. The fuck? Who the hell are these dogs? Jesus Christ, it's like a fucking dog movie in here. He's being a real picky bitch about it, too.